Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome, and we are just on time to start our weekend with watches. Reaching out to me, you can buy, trade, or sell. I am Tmaso at thewatchbox.com, and everything in this episode is in stock and for sale. I have details of pricing, box, papers, and condition. I can even take extra photos for you. But we also love to trade and purchase watches. We will buy your entire collection, no upper limit on value paid. We pay cash, we pay fast, we make the process incredibly simple. To buy, trade, or sell, reach out to me. I am Tmaso at thewatchbox.com. Okay, the second generation of Acheron Constantin Overseas debuted back in 2004, but it wasn't until 2009 that we got this model right here. It is informally known as the Deep Stream, which was a nickname developed during the design of this model. Officially, it's the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Chronograph. Unofficially, to collectors around the world, it's the Deep Stream because of the combination of the nickel anthracite chaptering and dial, the media blasted titanium bezel, and the way it contrasts with the stainless steel of the case. Now, getting a little bit closer, you can see that the media blast of the bezel really is quite subtle. It gives both a texture and a tone contrast with the steel and unlike the third generation overseas the second generation has a super flexible bracelet that pulls straight down out of the lugs so 42.5 is true to the size it wears its rated size it doesn't wear larger and it's only 12.5 millimeters thick which means really it's only about a tenth different from a Rolex Daytona in steel and that's quite impressive bracelet fixed by screws no spring bars here done the right way as you can see the internal finishing of each link of the bracelet incredibly intricate with a handsome contrast and every single link in the bracelet is removable on both sides so you will be able to find the right fit. The watch is remarkably tough for a Holy Trinity sports watch. The 150 meter water resistance sets it apart from every Aquanaut, Nautilus, Odysseus, if we're talking Langa as well, and all of the Royal Oaks except for the offshore divers. 150 is pretty robust. This is also an anti-magnetic watch with a soft iron cage around the movement, endowing it with 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic qualities. An ISO 764 anti-magnetic watch only needs to be 4,800 ampere per meter, so this is 25,000. It has plenty of loom as well. It's a true sports watch, make no mistake. Easy to distinguish in the dark. It's also easy to read by day. You could miss it at first glance, but one of the main changes from the first generation overseas chrono to the second here was the addition of a big eye style minute register where the minute register is larger than the constant seconds and the chrono hours. We also have a double digit date with a quick set feature. On the reverse, we actually had a little quiz on my Talking Time with Tim Masso Facebook group the other day where I posted a picture of the actual vessel that inspired this image and I asked, does anyone know the significance of this ship in watchmaking? This ship on the back, first and second generation overseas, has always been the image of the Italian naval training vessel Amerigo Vespucci. Beauty, considered to be one of the most beautiful square rigged ships in the world and that's exactly what we have here and the back of the case although solid is quite attractive with the ship polished the background the sky behind it chiseled then we have this radial satin grain that rings the center and a concentric satin grain that rings everything a really cool watch and a wonderful piece of craftsmanship inside we have a frederic piguet 1185 high horology automatic chronograph caliber hand finished five position adjusted 40 hour power reserve with both vertical clutch and column wheel the second generation overseas especially the deep stream remains a spectacular holy trinity sports watch value Now, you may be somewhat surprised that after opening with a Richemont brand, the theme of today's show is going to be independence. And every other watch featured on today's show will be from an independent brand. Let's start with this one. This is actually a 2022 U.S. market limited edition of 15 pieces, the Laurent Ferrier Classic Traveler. This previously launched in 2013 as the Galet Traveler. Now, the Galet line has been rebranded the Classic, and you can see what sets this apart. It's a combination of a case in stainless steel with a blue meteorite dial. Now, you can see it's been oxidized and stabilized to create those lovely crystalline patterns. What appears at first glance as though it might be a date is actually the second time zone in 24-hour format over at 9 o'clock. You see the Asagai, or white varnished spear style hour and minute hand, they rotate. I have that 24 hour format secondary time zone that I can adjust using pusher correctors. Well, 
locally, I can make the adjustments using the pusher correctors. This is a system borrowed from Patek Philippe and its travel time watches. They even borrowed the little notch feature. People ask me, what is the notch in these triggers on both Ferrier and Patek watches? And the idea is that you can dig your fingernail in to more precisely index the indications. Now, what we have over at three o'clock is in fact a date, and you can see that date is keyed to the local hour or the hour where you currently are at center. I believe Laurent Ferrier finishes among the finest in the industry. They arrived with a mountain of publicity, principally via Hodinkee in the early 2010s, and they peaked early, and that's unfortunate because there was a blowback against the brand when people started dinging them for etablissage or buying the best pieces, finishing them in-house, and assembling them. That's how Vacheron worked for its first 250 years. It is not a strike against a brand to use the absolute best parts from the best suppliers. And this LF23002 movement was designed by La Fabrique du Temps, which is the LVMH High Horology House out of Geneva. And you can see this is indeed High Horology. Bevels a mile wide, many sharp interior angles where bevels meet, black polished screw heads, black polished intermediate wheel rocker for the winding system, black polished bridge for the ratcheting micro rotor, black polished half bridge for the balance, and you can see it itself has four interior angles, and that is done in steel, which is extremely hard, resilient, and difficult to finish like that. We have several beautifully internally beveled jewel sinks, engine turning on the base plate, guilloche on the rotor, and then a balance that beats away at six beats per second. It actually has free sprung, overcoil hairspring, six position adjustment, making it both very durable and very precise in terms of technological advancements. If you look carefully, you can see two nickel phosphorus escape wheels. There is no Swiss lever in this watch. The two wheels impulse the balance directly. That is directly against the impulse jewel. There is no Swiss lever. So each wheel impulses the balance in just one direction, its current direction of travel. This is inspired by Breguet's 1802 natural escapement system. And the example that you have right here is a highly refined version of that made possible via galvanic lithography, LIGA. Breguet never got it to work right, but here it's been mastered. Now we also have incredibly broad and luminous Cote de Genève stripes. Everything about this movement represents the finest available. And it has a three-day automatic winding power reserve, just a truly stunning watch. But you can get an independent brand watch for a lot less money than that. In 2018, William Messena launched his first Messena Lab collaboration. Well, he'd previously done two watches for various anniversaries of Time Zone, on which he was the general manager. The first official Messena Lab watch was this Habring Irvin Lab 01. So this is the basic Irvin jumping second model, and you can see it has a 1930s style sector dial with metalized indices and numerals. We have lovely leaf style hands, no date, an elongated and hand rolled seconds hand. You can also see the minute hand has been rolled. It is precisely aligned with the indices. And you can see how it jumps from one hash to the next. It does feature a hacking or stop seconds function. It is 38.5 millimeters in an aluminum intensive bronze. And the idea here is that rather than turning green like most bronze does, this will turn more of a reddish brown over time. So making it more intense. You can also see that Messina has a true eye for detail. He went with a vintage-inspired unsigned crown and strap tool holes on squared-off lug ends, a very vintage look. The dial of the watch is sort of a gloss black with the Habring signature, as the watch was made in 50 pieces by Habring in Austria, Richard and Maria Habring, doing as much of the fabrication as possible inside of Austria. So although this movement has the basic drivetrain layout of a Valjoux 7750, this A11S is almost entirely fabricated by Habring using Austrian parts. Taking a quick look, you can see that the mechanism that periodically releases the center seconds hand, it is visible on the reverse side. All of this has been nicely finished with a combination of perlage, blued screws, black polish, circular satination, and media blast. 48 hour power reserve, four hertz beat rate, individually numbered. This one's actually one of my lucky numbers. My lucky numbers are 11 or any multiple of 11. Habring and Messina Lab, and this will be remembered as their first model ever. The first out of Messina Lab, which has become something of a juggernaut 
in fairly accessibly priced mid-market independent brand watches. A very cool watch for him or for her. It's short across the wrist. It's got a lot of visual power with that golden bronze that's already beginning to patinate and that black dial with metalized features easily distinguishable in any light. A really cool watch and one that has two heartbeats, four hertz and one hertz. Sticking with our theme of fairly accessible independence, Torsti Lane has a long history in watchmaking, but since 2018 with the Galita series, he's been launching watches that are very classically beautiful out of his Laloque manufacture. And as you can see here, this is the Galita 3, the latest evolution, but when you have the Guilloche dial in three different cuts, the Galita 3 becomes the GG3, and this is the Lane GG3. So we have a fish scale, a wave, and a clou de Paris, so a kite of Poisson, Vague, and Clou de Paris. We also have Belude, Breguet style, Arabic numerals, Belude, Alpha style hands. All of this cut reductively using a lathe. This is not stamped guilloche. The case, which is 40.5 millimeters in diameter, has a beautifully evacuated and mirror polished profile. You can see each side has been channeled and interior polished to a mirrored shine. It is very attractive. The timepiece does feature a remarkably small dead angle, which is to say, no matter which direction I turn this crown, there's almost no rotation before the hands start to move. It feels super precise and incredibly tight. It's rare to be able to achieve that total lack of play in a setting train, and it speaks to the precision of this watch. Although the movement has the same basic drivetrain architecture as a Unitas 6498, this movement is entirely original. You can see that the parts have been custom fabricated using the train architecture of the Unitas. And you can see we have solarization and double solarization on the crown and ratchet wheels. We have what's called the signature finish, this lovely relief across the gold gilded three-quarter bridge. The bevels are quite broad, and you can see that the same treatment has been lavished on the screw and jewel sinks. Manual wind, 50-hour power reserve, large slow beating, 18,000 vibration per hour balance. Other elements that are a standout include a set of half bridges in black polished steel here and here for the escape wheel and for the balance. You can see how broadly they've been rounded and beveled on their side, and then across their top, finished with diamond paste to create black polish. And some people ask, why do you call it poly noir or black polish? Because from every angle except the one, black polish turns black. Now you can see. A truly special watch, and with a lovely combination of beveling, channeling, satination, media blast, wonderfully special. A timepiece that could pass for a Voodoo and of course Lane did previously work with Kerry Voodoo so perhaps some measure of the master's style has worn off. It's about 50 millimeters from lug to lug, so it's got a big stance, and I would recommend it for a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger, but it is a breathtakingly beautiful thing on the wrist that looks multiples of its actual price. Okay. So here's something you will never see again. In the early 2000s to through mid 2000s, Peter Speakmarin, having been inducted into the AHCI in 2004, he started his own brand beginning with 2002. And when this watch was made in 25 pieces for the 2007 model year, the company was only making about 200 to 250 watches a year, and Speakmarin himself was still intimately involved in the creation of the movements and the watches. And that's critical because this is the product of an independent watchmaking auteur who was very much in charge of the brand at the time this spectacular, the vintage Tourbillon Mark II was manufactured. Look at that case back. All banknote scrolling, sort of florizant or floral, Freehand engraving on three different bridges. The anglage on the edge of the bridges, beautiful. You can see that the underside of the tourbillon bridge, black polished, beveled on its side and quite broad. Note the presence of a golden chaton set, brilliant cut diamond on both sides of the tourbillon. We have a solid vitreous enamel grand faux dial, and it sits on a precious metal base. We have fired hands, the distinctive style of the Speak Marin brand. We also have a distinctive case, the Piccadilly case, so named because Peter Speak Marin is, of course, British, and he often worked near Piccadilly Square. 
interesting. This is a watch that pays homage to his national origins, but also his origin as a restoration specialist. You can see some of these elements, such as the onion-style crown, are a throwback to the pocket watch era. Now, this watch features engine turning on the dial side, as well as both black polished and fire blued screws. The movement was based on an STT 1375, but if you look it up, you'll find that looks nothing like this. This is the train architecture, everything from the barrel down to the escapement, but just about every single part here has been custom fabricated, and you can see that it is artisanally exquisite. The STT is a reliable tourbillon movement. This takes it to the next level. It includes not one, not two, but three power reserve indicators for the 110 hour power reserve. So we have two different power reserves, one from zero to 55 hours, one from 55 up to 110, but then on the dial side, there is a little hole or aperture at six o'clock that will change colors when the watch gets down to 25 hours power reserve remaining. And that is your cue that you need to wind the watch. It's only 38 millimeters in diameter in white gold. And once again, being a 25 piece limited edition, you're not gonna see another. This is number one of 25, and that's a great serial number to have on any limited series. Also, it's a high beat tourbillon, so four hertz. This is a very modern tourbillon architecture designed to actually keep good time, not just to be an ornamental pleasure. When you throw the watch on the wrist, it has those Piccadilly style lugs, which are wear a little bit like a brigade, so it is fairly broad across the wrist. And even though it's a 38, I do recommend it for a 15 centimeter circumference wrist and up. It's 14 millimeters thick, but it should fit underneath most cuffs. And it's got a wonderful weight to it with the full white gold construction, as well as a reassuringly secure strap lug junction consisting of screws and bars rather than spring bars. This watch has it all. Limited edition, independent horology, a great watchmaker's name on the dial, and real involvement from him. Long power reserve, tourbillon, diamond capstones, exquisite finishing over every square millimeter of the movement. This has it going on. And while you will pay upwards of $200,000 for an FP Journe tourbillon in recent years, you can get something that's much more exclusive from an equally august master, and this from an era when Speak Marin was making very few watches. And if you compare this watch to the kind of FP Journe tourbillon being made in 2007, what those are worth today with freehand engraving, this is going to be a much better buy and a much more interesting purchase. So there's something to be said about owning an early watch from an important brand. This is a great example of that. The Debitun DB1 chronograph in white gold. Back in 2002, the DB1 was Debitun's first ever model. You can see that it incorporates both the watchmaking vision of co-founder Denis Flageolet from a watchmaking standpoint and co-founder David Zanetta from an aesthetic standpoint, which is why this is more of a classical aesthetic than some of the Debitune watches that came later. And we have a real reductive guilloche dial, solid silver white with blue printed Roman numerals. We have a conventional round case. We have otherwise conventional lugs that do feature the ogival or torpedo tip profile. There's a little bit of that left on the modern watches, but for the most part, these early time pieces stand out because they are so different from what came after, right down to the Breguet style hands. The watch uses a movement originally developed by Denis and F.P. Journe when they were partners in a company called THA during the 90s. It was a white label engineering house that would build movements and whole watches for others. And this movement was originally designed with Cartier in mind, being a column wheel, oscillating pinion clutch, manual wind, ultra thin, chronograph caliber. And what Denis did was he bought the rights to use it in his own watch. And rarity was the rule back then when they were only making a few dozen pieces in 2002 getting off the ground. Only 28 white gold examples of the DB1 were constructed. This is one of the 28. And as you can see, we have not polished this watch, nor will we. We want to retain all the factory metal as well as the sharpness and definition of the case features. It is a mono pusher, which means it's a lot of fun to operate. And I've always found mono pushers have a wonderful vintage vibe to them. It's a super flat watch, well under nine millimeters thick. You can see how flush it sits to the wrist. It's also narrow across 
the wrist and it'll work on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference if your wrist is flat across the top like mine. A really cool piece with a worthy high horology movement on the inside. These early Debitune watches were a breed apart, especially compared to what came later. And for a lot of folks, this was the most memorable era of Debitune style, back when they could go blow for blow with the likes of Philippe Dufour, Carrie Voudelin, and F. P. Journe in the classical style stakes. The technology certainly improved later, but if you want that classical old world look, it's always going to be the early Debitune models. We may as well take a look at where the brand went. Here's actually one of my favorite Debitunes of all time. Now, I'm not sure if Debitunes or Debitune watches is our convention for the brand, but I'm going to go with Debitunes for now because this one is incredible. This is the DB28 Digital. Now, the 28 used the floating lugs first introduced on 2008's DB26 Perpetual Calendar, and it adopted the architecture of the 2000. 11 GPHG Aiguidol winning DB28. So the Aiguidol is best picture at the Oscars of watching, watching, watchmaking, and the 28 won it. Now this changes the 28 to incorporate a solid dial with a Clou de Paris guilloche, as well as a center-mounted spherical moon phase, one half white palladium, one half blued steel, a scrolling minute and a jumping hour. The Digital is the watch that originally caused me to fall in love with Debitune. And I'm going to show you how you operate this. It's an absolute pleasure to operate. In fact, let's see if I can find the clutch position to show you how the moon phase works. The moon phase is actually two hemispheres joined together and fired over a oil lamp. One half is white palladium, one half is steel, and when fired over a bed of metal shavings on top of the lamp heating source, the steel turns blue and the palladium, which is inert, does not change color. So you wind up with this moon phase that's spherical and it only needs to be reset once every 122 years. Now we'll pull the crown out here and demonstrate how the jump hour system works. Extremely crisp and sophisticated. You can see it's well aligned, jumping instantaneously when the minute's ring hits zero. The case is 45 millimeters in diameter in super scratch resistant and lightweight grade five titanium. And the lugs are variable geometry from about 58 millimeters across to 53. It will curve and it will compress or expand to fit your wrist. Now, Debitune makes its own dials, cases, and movements, which means everything you see here is crafted in-house. So they're able to make dozens, sometimes even single-digit examples of certain designs without having to rely on volume orders from suppliers. If you take a quick look, you can see their proprietary system for fire bluing titanium, and they black polish it, and then they fire blue it. The little celestial bodies on this cosmos, if you will, those are actually dowels of white gold inserted into drillings on the dial, and this is real reductive guilloche, not stamped, cut. On the reverse side, twin barrels, self-adjusting, a patented system, five days of power reserve. You cannot accidentally overwind this system. We have one, two, three shock protection springs, triple pair shoot on the balance. You can see the balance is Denny's 2010 patent balance, which is a solid disc of silicon with a seamless white gold rim, reducing the impact of aerodynamic drag, maximizing the mass in the rim of the balance, and evening out the effects of temperature on the timing of the watch so it serves three purposes. We have a hairspring that's actually two pieces bent manually to create the curve and then clamped together and you can just barely see the clamp on the oscillating hairspring. It's actually hard to see that the watch is running because you have to look at the hairspring not the balance. But this dual element hand-shaped hairspring allows the watch to achieve the concentric breathing of an overcoil but with the flatness thinness and shock resistance of a flat hairspring finally you could see cote de batoon mirrored anglage and you could see it is a broad double anglage both the barrel bridge and then the striped plate on top both of them have been beveled we also have polished and blued center mount for the shock protection springs, which have themselves been black polished. There's solarization on both of the barrels. You can see the Cote de Batoon, they actually mirror each other from side to side. And then the bridge has been continuously rounded, mirror finished, and fired blue. It is a very, very impressive watch. When I first saw this watch back in 2016, I knew de Batoon would become my favorite brand. Even if the watch itself is maybe a little large for me, I can fall in love with timekeepers that don't 
won't fit on my wrist. After all, I adore pocket watches, and I can't fit those on my wrist. This is a watch for a guy who has a wrist probably of 17 centimeters circumference or larger, and the watch is thinner than you think, just 13.3 millimeters. It will slide underneath the cuff, and a spectacular way to get into Debetun. Armin Strom is an interesting brand because it was originally founded by the namesake watchmaker, skeletonization specialist, and engraver Armin Strom out of Biel, or Bien, depending on your linguistic preference, in Switzerland. And Strom was mainly known for customizing ETA, Valjoux, and Unitas movements with elaborate skeletonization and engraving. But under current ownership, Armin Strom, since the late 2000s, has forged a path as an integrated manufacturer developing and building its own movements while still keeping finishing in-house. This is a watch that came out back in 2019. It's the Gravity Equal Force, and this is actually a one of five edition made for the limited edition of Britain, which is a exotic and independent brand watch vendor. And so this was for the fifth anniversary of LTD, and you can see that the watch is special, a combination of a Kerry Voudelin and crafted primary dial, and then a 12-wave rosette that sits on top of the base plate. You see there's guilloche with a nickel anthracite coating underneath all of the works as well as the dial, and that's all reductive guilloche. Look carefully, and you can see the quality of the finish. We have one, two, three, four, five, six interior angles on the bridges that bear the setting system, the micro rotor for automatic winding, and the motor barrel. You can see that the motor barrel actually includes an integrated power reserve indicator. So it has a power reserve indicator built onto the barrel for the 72-hour automatic winding power reserve. And it's a motor barrel, which means it drives the train off of its arbor rather than its toothed edge. As a result, it gives a very even and regular flow of power. Perhaps not so much because it's a motor barrel, but because the concept underpinning this watch is that a stop works has been used at both ends of the mainsprings wind the very high end and the very low end a stop works will halt the watch so rather than keep bad time it will stop keeping time so you know you need to reset or rewind your watch the stop works keeps the mainspring in the flat of its torque curve so by cropping off the very ends of the power reserve very high and very low Serge and Claude, the folks behind Armin Strom today, have created what is effectively a constant force concept that doesn't require the complexity or the cost of a remontoire, a differential, or a fusée. So you get this equal force, as per the name, equal force gravity, for 72 hours. And you can see the finishing is both diverse and executed at the highest level. Eclectic, beautiful, but handsomely monotone. We have media blasting, satination, striping, beveling, black polish, solarization, and perlage. It is a very impressive thing. And as you can see, it's free sprung for durability and precision of adjustment and adjusted in all positions chronometer style. A very impressive watch. 41 millimeters in stainless steel with a few well-chosen rose gold accents. And I want to call out my favorite, not actually the crown, but if you look carefully, the screws mounting the triplicate of bridges on the dial, they are all polished rose gold. Really nice stuff. Armenstrom and Voudelainen together for LTD, a five-piece edition. This is number one. If you're going to own a limited edition watch, it's always great to get the first or the last serial number. A lot of fun and a cool independent that's really been on the rise. Armenstrom. Looks fantastic and surprisingly easy to read for a subdial watch. Finally, I've saved what I consider to be the most spectacular for last, and this certainly is. Launched in 2020 in 12 pieces to celebrate the 12th anniversary of the modern Moritz Grossman manufacturer. This is the Moritz Grossman Power Reserve 12th anniversary, 41 millimeters, blackened with diamond-like carbon, and as you can see, polished all the way around. This is a 41 millimeter stainless steel watch that represents the absolute best in German watchmaking. The first thing I want you to see is the attention to detail. All of the printing on this dial is off-white, creamy. So instead of being a harsh white on black, it's a softer off-white or cream on black base. The hands at Mords Grossman crafted manually. First cut, 
then polished, finished, deburred, and finally set with a high ceram ceramic material to make for better contrast against the dial base. Now the watch has a power reserve indicator that transforms from red to that same cream tone as the indices, the numerals, and the dial printing. And we have one of the most innovative setting systems I've ever seen. Note that the watch is currently running. Pull the crown out. The crown snaps right back. Now the watch is hacked. I can set the time, and there is zero angular play in the crown. The second the crown moves, the hands jump. And once you've set exactly the time you want, the way this works, because the crown is already back in, note the watch has stopped. You press this little release trigger, and the watch restarts. So the idea here is, there's no danger of pressing the crown in and accidentally budging the hands, as always happens when you return the crown after setting a conventional watch. You set it precisely, and then the drivetrain re-engages, disabling the stop works, so that you can set this watch and keep it set while re-engaging the drivetrain. It's amazing. Look at their attention to detail. Take a look at how broad those Glasuta stripes are on a German silver base that's a little paler than what you'll find at Langa, complemented by golden chiton fixing uncolored synthetic sapphires rather than synthetic rubies. Look how gradiated the stripes are, dark on one side, light on the other. That's real abrasive wheel striping. We have triple solarization of the ratchet wheel, black pop polishing on the crown wheel core, solarization of the mechanism adjacent, and you can see that its bridge has also been beveled and satinated atop. All of the engraving on the bridges is done freehand. This isn't done with a laser or drill bit, and you can see we have both an escape wheel cock and a balance cock that have been freehand engraved. Mords Grossman, I'll show you how the stop work system works, Mords Grossman makes its own variable inertia recessed bolt balance in-house, and they use an overcoil hairspring to allow this watch, which is adjusted in six positions, to keep outstanding time in any position. We have screws that have been fired to a violet color. This takes skill and timing. If you just fire a screw or a steel part indefinitely, it'll turn a rich blue, which is attractive but easy. To fire something to a lighter color, you have to remove the heat source and the oxygen quickly and uniformly so that all the screws come out that same violet hue. Take a look at the golden chiton fixing the jewels into place. This is how pocket watches were made in the era of Moritz Grossman, the person, not the brand. And today, they're beautiful. They're unnecessary, but beautiful. They do add a little bit of shock resistance to the watch. There are things going on here that nobody does, including, I'll do my best to show you, but the teeth of the crown wheel, the ratchet wheel, and the third wheel in the sequence have been micro-beveled internally. That's right, if you, if you look at this under a 10 to 20 power loop, you will see that the teeth have actually been micro-beveled through their entire arc. That's as good as it gets anywhere. There's media blasting on the base plate. You can see Moritz Grossman uses its own micrometric screw fixed regulator. The watch is durable in DLC coated stainless steel. It's a wear every day kind of independent masterpiece. The anglage is as beautiful as anything from Longuntina or a Langa Unzona, and I actually feel that this is better finishing than you'll get at Langa. And 42-hour manual wind power reserve, one of the most positive winding feels I've ever encountered, and one of the most positive setting feels. This is as good as it gets, and it's, it gives you a stark, edgy look that you can't get from a Langa or a Patek Philippe or a Vacheron. This goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the edgiest Audemars Piguet dress watches of all time, while rivaling all of the Holy Trinity and Langa in terms of finishing quality. Quality. For more, it's Grossman, a company that makes well under 500 watches a year, as good as it gets in East Germany, and in fact, the world. Remember, reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.